Hello and welcome to this video in the Unlocking Behaviour Change series. So this one is a short video just to give you my thoughts on um, behavioural science and, and what it is, because uh, any of you who've heard the name behavioural science or had something to do with behavioural science might be a little confused given that lots of different people seem to think it's different things. So let's get started. Well, at its most general, and if you look at uh, encyclopedia definitions of behavioural science, you'll see that um, what it is, is um, the scientific study of individual, group and population behaviour and the things that influence it. So it's basically anything to do with the scientific study of behaviour um, and its causes. Scientific study involves uh, gathering data systematically on a topic, using that data to build models and theories, and using these in turn to make predictions and testing those predictions using data. That's basically what science is. So those models and theories um, in science can be deterministic. In other words, they can say this will definitely happen, this value will definitely uh, appear if we measure it, or they can be probabilistic or stochastic, as it's sometimes called. Um, now, in behavioural science, like um, many other sciences, including meteorology, for example, um, the models and theories are mainly probabilistic. That means that uh, for every prediction that we make, we should really be expressing a degree of confidence from low to high, uh, or even, you know, we can be almost certain in some cases, rather than talking in absolutes. But the term behavioural science is also being used to describe um, much more constrained approaches to the study of behaviour, including things like nudge theory, um, uh, or behavioural economics, or even uh, behavioural psychology. And I think uh, that that's unhelpful because it unnecessarily limits the types of models and theories and even methods uh, that are used to understand and predict behaviour. Behavioural science is a very practical science and it's used very importantly to develop interventions, as we call them. Uh, that's anything we do purposefully in order to achieve an effect um, to influence behaviour. Uh, but it's also used to anticipate trends in behaviour that may occur naturally and that we need to know about, um, and the impact of events, earthquakes, uh, that kind of thing, for example. Um, and also other behaviours, non-behavioural interventions. So, for example, when, we, um, when we build a new railway system, um, what's going to be the impact on various behaviours of one sort or another? Now, as broadly defined, a behavioural science um, draws on very diverse disciplines, including psychology, psychiatry, sociology, anthropology, pharmacology, ergonomics, operations research, linguistics, a whole host of things, economics, genetics, neuroscience, management science, computer science. They, all of these disciplines have parts of them which involve behaviour and involve building models of behaviour and making predictions and even um, uh, uh, developing interventions to influence behaviour. So one way of thinking about behavioural science is that when applied, uh, these disciplines are applied to the study of behaviour, that's what behavioural science is. So it can be seen then as a kind of intersection of these disciplines where they involve studying behaviour. Uh, for example, um, on the screen here, you've I've just got four of the disciplines that are commonly involved in, uh, in what we think of as behavioural science. And if you look at the sort of intersection of all of those, OK, that is uh, behavioural science. It can also be useful to think of behavioural science as an integrative approach to the scientific study of behaviour, bringing together these uh, potentially diverse um, disciplines. Um, it involves creating and testing models and theories of behaviour that span 
the contributing behavioural sciences and provide an understanding of behaviour that transcend those disciplines. And the capability, opportunity, motivation, behaviour model, COM-B model, would be an example of this. So behavioural sciences uh, uh, and behavioural science as broadly defined have been practised for more than a century. Uh, and of course, even before that, there were disciplines and so on that uh, clearly uh, had uh, behaviour uh, as one of their focal points. Um, so it's important to remember and use those findings and insights that have been generated over this time. There is a bit of a tendency to think, well, behavioural science has only just been invented by behavioural economists, for example, uh, or nudge theorists. Um, but of course, that's not true. And the, uh, the, the en enormous advances and insights made in um, areas of psychology, sociology, uh, psychopharmacology and so on, um, have had important effects uh, and it's very important to use those models and theories. So um, one way that we can think of modern behavioural sciences as sort of integrative science, which acts as a kind of funnel for the relevant insights uh, that have been generated over these decades. So, um, so we've got all these different theories and models. For example, in psychology, uh, we've got operant conditioning. Uh, uh, these are, this is uh, theories about the impact of reward and punishments on behavior. Um, classical conditioning, the extent to which we learn to value things or respond to things because they've been associated with other things. Um, very powerful theories in social psychology, such as cognitive dissonance theory, um, which uh, at its heart says that when we we have two beliefs that seem to conflict with each other. It makes us uncomfortable and we're motivated to do something about it. Um, the whole host of decision theories that are out there, subjective expected utility theory, um, multi-attribute utility theory, um, uh, conflict theory. There's, there's, there's so many of these. Um, uh, social norm theories, of which there are many varieties, looking at the impacts of norms on behaviour. Drive theories, understanding the way that hunger and thirst and so on operate. Um, social learning theory, how, how we learn from uh, looking at what other people are doing and what happens to them when they do it. And then you've got, you extend into uh, economic theories such as price elasticity, the extent to which demand for a product goes down when the price goes up. And you know these are just uh, off the top of my head, a, a few of the enormous number of very important and powerful theories that we need to be cognizant of when we're um, developing um, integrative models within behavioural science. So behavioural science should really provide a way of using and linking these models of theory, and that requires a transdisciplinary approach. It also requires a recognition of the need to bring together disciplinary and domain experts wherever possible to address a particular issue. And I can't stress this enough. It doesn't matter how clever you are or how good a behavioural scientist you are, you can't be an expert in everything. And so when you're trying to solve uh, an issue or, or address a problem, um, such as a practical problem, um, or develop a theory in a particular domain, you need domain experts. You absolutely do. Otherwise, you will get it wrong. Um, and of course, there are so many of these areas, you know, um, I mean, behavioural science is heavily involved in domestic violence study, um, smoking cessation, physical activity, environmental protection, infection control, obviously, as we've seen with COVID, uh, consumer behaviour, online abuse. I mean, the list goes on and on. But these things all have certain principles in common, and that's where the integrative part of behavioural science comes in. So where does that leave us? Well, first of all, behavioural science is much more than behavioural economics and much more than psychology. It's, um, it is at its broadest the scientific study of behaviour. And we can think of a kind of integrative behavioural science as a way of bringing together all these various disciplines to understand a problem. Of course, it's not just about individual behaviour. And we often talk about behavioural and social sciences. And that actually makes a lot of sense to emphasise the, uh, the fact that we, uh, in the social, that we're not just talking about individuals. We're also talking about groups, populations, cultures, and so on. 
Um, now, advances in behavioral science have been made for more than a century, and it's really important to, uh, to know what these are and to understand them if one's going to be a behavioral scientist. Um, and then finally, when addressing uh, a given issue, there's really no substitute for domain-specific expertise. 